so the concept is, is that when you do help somebody move, you ever help your grandparents move, and you take a painting off the wall, so you'll notice that there's paint on the wall, but when you take the painting off, the color that was beneath that painting is different, it's more pure, it's cleaner than all of the area surrounding that painting. So in other words, that over the years, dust and dirt has come onto the wall slowly to the point where the color outside and, and that is exposed is different than the color that's underneath the painting. The painting was able to keep the color pure. And so too with a holiday as Hanukkah, there's something so deep and pure. But because we live in a capitalistic society that is dependent upon advertising, things get manipulated into various things so our view of it is twisted and is not pure. So what I want to do is uncover the painting, take off the painting and show you a deeper meaning of what it really is, not what it looks like from the outside. In order to do this, we always have to ask questions. As we said, you are what you ask. So two questions. The first one is, what do we celebrate? Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah, that what? That we beat the Greeks, we were able to fight, it's a military celebration, or that the oil lasted for eight days. Which one is it? An oil lasting for eight days? Festival of lights? Who cares, does that really matter? Of what relevancy is that? So what do we celebrate on Hanukkah? Question number one. And the second question is that what does the word mean, Chanukah? So the simple definition is Chanukah, Chanu, they rested, Chanu means to rest, Ka, on the 25th day of Kislev. But the Zohar, the main book of Kabbalah, says that Chanukah means that it rested Ka, the 25 letters that is in Kriyat Shema, the phrase that all Jews know, Shema Yisrael, Shem Elokeinu, Shem Echad, has 25 letters. And Hanukkah, the victory of Hanukkah, was that now it rested the 25 letters of Shema. Shema now was established. What does Hanukkah have to do with Shema? What's the connection between them? So to answer it, we'll go to the top of the triangle and give a sense of clarity in order to create a context, is that there's no real concept of battles of anti-Semitism. Each battle that we face is meant to be, and it brings out something in us, that when we fall in an area and then we're taken over by that, we become stronger, we build antibodies. So there was a time period in which a nation, unlike other nations prior to that, they were interested in ideas and intellect, something that we've been talking about for a long time as Jews, but we were surrounded by people that were not interested in knowledge and wisdom and finding out how the world works. Come the Greeks, who are the overseers of the land of Israel, the time period that we're talking, approximately 140 BCE, and the Greek culture, the Hellenistic culture, influenced us as Jews. We became leaning towards this Hellenism. These guys are good, they're smart, they're in shape. They work out. I think this is good. We have a good relationship here. But ultimately, it came to a head. And what was the battle about? They did not want to kill us all. During the time period of Mordechai and Esther, they wanted to kill us, regardless of philosophy. In the time period of the Greeks, they said, you could live. But this concept of Torah, stop it. This we don't believe in. Stop learning Torah. It was a battle about intellect. Here's the main crux of the battle that the Greeks, in Hebrew it's called Yavan, they believed in wisdom, that a person has to develop themselves, and you are wise, and you have the ability to acquire wisdom. But wisdom is a composite of natural observation. One plus one, put those two together, it equals two. You're observing the world and calling that intellect. Geometry is an observation of the world. They believe that what you see is what you get. We believe that the body of wisdom known as Torah comes from a place that's beyond this world. It reveals a place that's beyond this world. 
it connects us to a place that's beyond this world and enables us to make this world different, to make this world aligned to a realm that's beyond this world. That was the ultimate battle between us, the origin and the nature of Torah. We believe this is not it. There's a dimension as we speak that although we can't touch it, feel it, and fully understand it, it exists as we speak. And this dimension is revealed to us through this realm called Torah. That was the battle. Oil in Hebrew is called Shemit. Oil is always hinted to as a synonym for Chachma, for wisdom, on a simple level because Shemin, oil, illuminates, it creates light. And as we've been speaking this whole time, that how is it that we connect? What is the ultimate purpose? How do we connect to the purpose of the world? It's through light. God saw the light, Esha or the light, and it was Tov. How do you connect to Tov? Through this realm called Or, through this realm called light. The metaphor of light is always oil, Shemin, because it illuminates. So what happened was, on the 24th day of Kislev, the battle ended. They come into the temple, they find one flask of oil with the seal of the Kohen Gadol, and it lasts for eight days. Who cares? It would have been a miracle if it lasted for four days or 16 days. Why eight days? The Maral of Prague explains that in this world, it works in a series of seven. There are seven days of the week seven notes in music. Everything that's relevant to this physical world is always in a series of seven. Eight represents one above seven, one above nature. The concept of Shemona, eight, is that we can connect beyond this world. We can grasp and have uh, a connection to a dimension that's beyond this world. Says the Maral of Prague, when they came into the temple, and they found the oil, and it lasted for eight days, that occurrence was a reflection of what the crux of the battle was. When the Shemin, oil that represents Torah, a light that's beyond this world, lasted above nature, how many days above nature? Eight days above nature. Eight is the quintessential number that represents above nature. And where do you see this? In the root of the word. The root of the word eight, in Hebrew it's shmona, is the word shemen. What does shemen, oil, have to do with shmona, the number eight? They share the same root, they share the same current. The concept is, is that shemen illuminates above nature, Torah gives us this above nature perspective, and the number that correlates to that realm is shmona one above nature, hydroplaning above nature. What's Shema? So as we know that it's divided into three parts. Shema Yisrael, Shema doesn't mean just to hear, it means to understand and be at one with. Yisrael, that we are, each one of us as individuals, part of a nation called Yisrael. And there are two parts, Hashem Elokeinu, God is our God, Hashem Echad, and God is one. And as we've asked, why, why the repetition of God's name? Just say Hashem, Keinu Echad. But the Maral of Prague explained in a different place that we believe that there are two phases of existence. Phase one, now. That there's this miraculous nation, one quarter of one percent of world population, that holds on to this light, Hashem Elokeinu. Now, we know that. We as Jews know that. Our job is to be a light unto the nations, a light unto the world. And eventually, if we do our job right, it will be a Shem Echad. We'll actually move the world to that place in which everybody will recognize that, in which everyone will be at one. So what is the faith of the Jewish people? The Shema. What does a person say right before they pass away? The Shema. What, what is so important about the Shema? Because in it is the fundamental foundation of our belief system of what makes us Jews, which is that it's incumbent upon us to connect to the reality that now it's Elokeinu. Now 
We the Jews receive the Torah on Mount Sinai. But our goal, if we correctly institute it, is to bring the world to a better place. Bring the world to a place that will supersede nature. Bring the world to a place in which everything will be at one, in which it will be all different. And how do we do that? How do we say Shema? We cover our eyes. Shema. What are you covering your eyes for? You brought someone to synagogue for the first time. Like, what are you playing hide and go seek? Okay, you go one, two. Okay, go fine. I'm not peeking. Well, why would you cover your eyes? The concept is it, it, it reveals because we're saying we can't see this in this world. This that we're saying, that Hashem Elokein or Hashem Echad, that's a dimension that we know to be true through learning the Torah, that we know to, to be true through our belief, but it's not fully revealed. You won't see it in a physical way. But we believe that it's there. And when we connect to it, we make it occur. And we actually move the world towards that place. So in answer to our question, we ask, what are we celebrating? The battle? Or we're celebrating oil lasting eight days. We're celebrating one concept. Someone stops in the street and says, what is Hanukkah about? It's the celebration of Torah illuminating in an above natural way. What's the celebration? We beat the Greeks since when are we so militarily uh, oriented? Like, yeah, woo, all right, that was a good battle, huh? That was good, yeah, we celebrate that battle. A lot of battles we celebrate. Uh, no, actually no, we're not big fighters. Smart, do the accounting, but we're not big fighters. We're not celebrating the war, woo, a uh, little guerrilla warfare, don't mess with us. No, the concept is, is that Right before the temple was destroyed, we're talking a short time before the temple was destroyed, we got a care package to take with us as we go through the diaspora. And what's that? It's the reality of Hanukkah, which is that this Torah that we have connects us to above nature, comes from above nature, and it is above nature. One of the themes that we've seen throughout this series is that there's no way somebody made that up. It's not just a random collection of writings collected by rabbis in a desert with pen and paper. There's no way that everything connects to be one, that the word Adam not only reflects what you are, but reflects how you get to where we're supposed to be, that it's a numerical value of Ma, that it connects to God's name. That's not made up, that's a metaphysical reality that's from beyond this world. We light one candle, then we light two, we start with a new one, then you light three, start with a new one. Why? If it's a celebration of above t t in the nature, just like light eight every single time. Because the concept is that all of us, it's a lesson in connection. In order for us to connect, we have to ascribe to the human limitations and we have to add and grow. In Hebrew it's called Mosef Vaholech. You add and you go. You can't get it all at once. But you have to be involved in the incremental. So we light candles, one and then two, showing that we believe that, yes, this is a light that's beyond nature. But we, in this physical world, how do we incorporate it? On an incremental level. We move incrementally. We always try to make things new. We always want to reconnect. And then eventually we build up to that reality of eight. The end. Any questions on that? Okay, so let me just give you the, uh, that was good. I'll just, I, I could just add in the applause afterwards. <laughs>